All right, good started, champions. Uh, today uh, we're gonna focus on angles and rotations. So uh, angles and rotations. Okay. Beautiful mustache. <laughs> Beautiful mustache. Okay. Uh, this was the wall of AIDS, and all of you belong to the wall of AIDS. You're showing up here, so that's that's awesome. Your attitude is an A attitude. Anyways, let's go start with the warm up. Uh, I'm gonna put the timer here and let's see if we can put it down here timer I'm probably gonna give two minutes for this the word supplement if you have a question on supplement it whatever adds uh, whatever adds you up to 180 so whatever angle that you're adding uh, to your angle to get you to 180 that's the word supplement Uh, once you start getting some uh, answers, I would probably like to you to put them in the chat. I have a couple eyes here, uh, one on this screen, the one on the other screen. Trying to see where you guys are at. Any answers in the chat? Okay, let me uh, stop uh, at here. Almost there. But... Okay. Uh, what adds? Uh, what gets me to 180 from here is gonna be if I'm uh, 150, I'm probably here. So I need the remaining 30, right? So what measure of a supplement angle? Whatever helps me reach 180 is what we're after here. So in this case, I have 30. How about 95? Anybody do number two? 95. I see some of you typing. 85. 85 is what gets me to uh, to um, to that. Okay. Uh, the second one. Uh, what do you think is the traffic or the default or that? Well, at least in the U.S. Hey, by the way, this is the U.S. Uh, uh, do we? How do you enter the uh, roundabout? Counterclockwise, that is true. Counterclockwise. And then uh, find the sine and cosine. This might take a little bit of time, but uh, let's just do it. This is a review for last uh, session or lecture. Uh, we are missing here. Maybe I want to name it B. Or so I have 12 squared minus 8 squared is going to give me that B squared. 12 squared is uh, 144, 64, how much do you think, you guys? How much do you think we have? 80, I like that. Uh, 80, uh, so that's B squared. B squared equals 80. And uh, for me to... Keep working with that. I've got to take the 80 and branch it out. So basically, I have a square root of 80, which is easily broken down uh, to of f 16, 5. You always look for the perfect square under it, by the way, the biggest perfect square that you could find. Uh, the 4, the 9, the 16, the 25, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is a square root of 16, and then... Um, and then uh, uh, square root of uh, five. This is a four square root of five. So I know that this is going to be b. B equals four square root of five. Four square root of five. Okay. So to find the six trig functions, obviously the sine, cosine, and tangent, uh, you would uh, need to. Uh, we would need to uh, take it again and uh, just clean up a little bit here. Uh, four square root of five. Sine, theta, 
opposite. Opposite of me is eight over the hypotenuse, 12. And I see myself looking at, uh, uh, divide this by four, this goes into four uh, two times, this goes into four three times. Uh, three, three, three halves. Okay, how about cosine? Cosine theta is adjacent. Adjacent of me is four, square root of five over the 12. The 12. The 4 and the 12, this goes three times here. So I've got myself square root of 5 over 3. Okay. If you're with me, say something, uh, yes, or uh, raise your hand, or uh, do something that shows that you're doing fine here. Okay, then tangent. Tangent theta. Well, tangent is... Uh, Tangent is uh, opposite over um, adjacent. So opposite of me is 8. Adjacent of me is 4, square root of 5. And the 8 and the 4 have something in common. I could divide both of them are divisible by 4. Got 2 over square root of 5. Mm, uh, yeah, but mm, yeah, mm, no. It mm, could be more proper by rationalizing it, square root of 5. So now that's going to lead me to say this is 2 square root of 5 over 5. I don't have any other thing to uh, simplify it with. That's the most simplified version of that. Uh, of that. Unless if, uh, if the 2 can go to the 5, which no, it can't. So that is the finale. Okay. Any questions on the warm-up? I highly, highly advise that you uh, at least give a skim through or, or, or take a look at the last lecture before we start today's uh, uh, lecture. So it's easier when you actually have the information in your brain ready. I know I've been going a little bit slow, but uh, it helps. Okay? Okay, the answer is here. Uh, counterclockwise is the default for the uh, roundabout in the US. Okay, we go. So we'll be able to draw angles in standard position and determine values of their trigonometric, trigonometric functions. So we're gonna be able to draw angles in standard position and uh, determine the values of their trig functions. We're talking about sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, Pre-calcs, I know that you guys are with me, so uh, you have also three other ones to think about. Secant, cosecant, and uh, cotangent. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing today. And somebody, uh, I need two or three of you to write down a couple words from the objective in your chat, please. Pick words that stand out from the objective. I see yeah, a couple of you are writing. Um, at least, at least one word from the objective, you guys. That tells me that you're with me. But what few of you here? I see that, Ethan. Yes, I see that, Vince. One more, please. Daniela, okay. All right, here's some real life applications of uh, rotation. Well, one thing that probably is found in most house uh, homes is uh, is this dude here, right? So that's uh, what we learn. Obviously, we we use it in real life. So that's a, a real life example. Can you think of other example? Feel free to chime in uh, with the chat. Think of another example of rotation. But yes, everything we use here. Uh, everything we learn here it has obviously a real life application. A clock, yep, I see that. Okay, here's some vocab for today. Uh, standard position of the angle, initial side, terminal side, angle of rotation, co-terminal angle, and then reference angle. All right. So here is uh, some explanation of the uh, such uh, things that we're going to go over these vocab. The first one, angle in standard position, occurs when its vertex is at the origin and one of the rays is on the positive x-axis. 
Okay, this is the standard position. Basically, if I have something uh, like this, this is my beginning, initial site, and I just rotate. Just say maybe up to here. That's my terminal site. So angle initial side would be the one on the x-axis, just like what I just showed you here. That's this one here. And angle terminal side would be the other end or the end of the uh, angle. So you have a beginning and end of the angle, or rotation in this case, and then this is when it ends. It ends at that location. So that's the angle a terminal side, okay? So you start at the, uh, uh, on top of the x-axis, you start with initial, and then you end up with a terminal side, which is the other way of the angle. Okay, uh, it is important to know the a rotation uh, for the angles. There's obviously a counterclockwise and there's clockwise. Counterclockwise happens when you are in default rotation. In math, the default is counterclockwise, against the clock that is, opposite of the clock. Counterclockwise is opposite of the clock. Okay, so um, keep that in mind. Uh, which is a positive direction, and then there is a negative direction, which is clockwise. If you if you rotate with the clock, it's it's uh, negative, but if you rotate against the clock, it's positive. So if I am here, and another one here, and uh, let's say I want to rotate positive. Positive is counterclockwise against the clock. Let's say I want it to go uh, 90 degrees. Okay, so you start here. This is your initial. And then you're gonna go 90 degrees like this. And then you're gonna stop here. This is your terminal side. This is 90 degrees positive. Because I rotate it against the clock. Let's say that you wanted uh, 270 but negative. You wanted to draw a theta is negative 270. Well, how do you draw that? Well, you start always again with initial side, which is here, that's your initial. But now this time you're actually gonna go with the clock. So you're gonna go clockwise. That's 90, that's negative 90 for me. That's negative 180. That's negative 270. Interesting. And I stop here. That's my... I stop here. That's my last... Let me choose a different color for this guy. It's going to be my last. Here's my last. Uh, and I rotated... Uh, in this case, I rotated negative. So, uh, with the clock, basically. Okay. Uh, you need to understand that uh, if we say a full rotation or just a rotation, a rotation, it means 360, half rotation is uh, is 180. So just remember the word rotation is always referring to 360. If I don't, if there's no other qualifications for the statement, then yes, it's just 360 is a full rotation. So let's try this again. Here I have a few angles. <clears throat> Let's play with them here a little bit and see how can we get 320, for example. So let me have my initial side. I'm going to choose this color here. My initial side, do you see that? That's too faint. Let me pick another color. So here's my initial side here. That's my initial side. And I want it to go positive, obviously, because it's positive. So I'm going to go counterclockwise. Here is 90. Here is 180, 270, and then uh, 270 plus, 270 plus what gives you 320? 270 plus what gives me 320? Okay, yes, I see 50. So I gotta have to add 50 here. So I am, if this whole thing is 90, then probably I'm gonna be more than half of it, which is 45, so I'm, I'm done here. And now I'm going to have <clears throat> my terminal side. Remember, the terminal side is the end of that angle. Okay, and that's the uh, 320. Positive. 
Now, how do I graph negative 110? Should I go clockwise or counterclockwise? In the chat, please, if you can indicate. Should I go clockwise or counterclockwise for negative 110? I see that, uh, Jenny, I have to go clockwise. <clears throat> I gotta go clockwise. So once again, I have to start again. I got to start from my initial side, which is always on the x-axis. And from there, I have to uh, go, uh, uh, I was told to go clockwise, so I'm gonna go like this. Oh, that's not an error, I just need a line. I'm gonna go like this, 90, that's 90, negative. And then another what? Another what? How far should I go here? How many degrees do you think I should go after the 90 to get the 110? 20. 20 is right. So I'm probably somewhere here. And uh, that's going to be my terminal sign. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> this is going to be negative 110. Okay, how about the big guy here? 990. Whoa, whoa, my goodness. How do I do that? Hmm. <laughs> Okay, well, is it positive? It's positive, right? So I'm going to have to start thinking about my default rotation, which is uh, that is uh, counterclockwise. So I have my blue line here just for you guys to see. I've got my initial side, and then I have to rotate, but i got to think a little bit because if I go like this, that's 180, 270, 360. That's not enough. Another one, 360 plus 360. Oh, okay. What's uh, 360 plus 360? <clears throat> How much is that? Do I need to do? I need, and let me see somebody here. Uh, so, yeah, 720. I'm not even close. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I'm closer, but not close. So how far am I from the, if I got two two circles, uh, that is two times 360 is two uh, is 720, 720. Well, how far am I from 990? Two seventy. Okay, well, I have to add another 270, sure. I'm sure because this is a different color, obviously, but you land exactly on the spot here. So 270. Um, 270 uh, or uh, is the same as 990. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> Try this on your own, okay? Okay, uh, somebody chime in, please, in the chat. <clears throat> Tell me how do I do uh, the first one? How do I do 2 to 10? 2 10. Left, right, should I go counterclockwise, clockwise? Where, where am I going to be? 
counterclockwise. Okay, uh, okay, counterclockwise. I'm gonna stop the timer here. Counterclockwise. So I'm gonna start here. So I go here 90, and then 180, and then how much after 180? 30. Thank you. And I have my terminal side here. Okay, that's 210. Okay, how about, <laughs> oh my goodness, how about 1020 degrees? How'd you get that? How many how many rotations do you think I have to spin and spin and spin? And how many? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, somebody has five, somebody has three. Somebody has three, five. How many rotations do you think? Total. I mean, uh, uh, the question is, if I wanna, if I wanna draw this angle here, how many rotations do you think I have to have? I mean, because this guy is much more than three hundred and sixty. Much more than three hundred and sixty. So let's uh, let's start with uh, with the first one. Uh, somebody suggested three. So if I'm uh, going like this, let me go back here. If I go like this, I'm gonna start here. That's my initial, and I'm gonna go like this. Here's 360. That's not enough. Another 360. That's 720, isn't it? 720. 720. How far am I from the 1010? 1020. I'm sorry. 300 more. Okay, 300 more. 300 more, which means I could go all the way to 180, 270, and then, oh, pause here. I'm 60 away from my third rotation. Okay, so I'm just going to have to stop here. This is 10, 20. Okay, uh, this is my terminal side. Uh, negative 300, negative 300. So I'm gonna start, uh, let me start here. You always start on the x-axis. I'm just showing a different color here. But I start here. Uh, do you think I rotate clockwise or counterclockwise or what's the deal here? Clockwise, yep, because of this guy here. So I have to go clockwise, this is First uh, quadrant 90, second quadrant 180, third quadrant uh, 270, fourth quadrant, I'm going all the way through. I'm almost going to hit, no, you can't hit 360 because you are going to be more than what you need to be. Yeah, you only need to be 300. So you're going to go this way. You're going this way. Does anybody know where, where else, uh, who else lives here? And this same spot here, this is negative 300. And I did that clockwise because of this guy here, clockwise, like this. Who else lived there? <sighs> Who else lived in that same spot? Anyways, I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Coterminal angles. So these are angles in the center position with the same terminal side. So you rotate and then you land on the spot that somebody else lives in. It's basically, if you guys remember, uh, positive and negative roommates. So for example, 120 is, is in the same spot as negative 240. Happens to be the same angle uh, uh, on the same, I should say, terminal side of negative two, uh, 240. So is this gonna happen one time only the answer is no because you could keep looping you could keep rotating rotating 360 at 360 at 360 and you will end up with a, you land on the same spot that's why we call them sometimes negative roommates sometimes the positive roommates so and the best thing is to add and subtract multiples of 360 add and subtract multiples of a full rotation let's take an example on this on the uh, topic of co terminals which I usually label as positive and negative roommates. Okay, here we go. Find the measure of a positive angle 
and a negative angle, a positive roommate, negative roommate, who is or are in the same terminal, the co-terminal, like co-inhabit, coexist in the same angle as uh, 65. So first of all, am I just going to graph myself a line and another line? And I have to think of uh, 65. Here is my initial. My initial is here. And then I have to go 65. So I'm not 90. That's too much for me. So I'm 65, which is probably somewhere here. I'll probably say it's somewhere here. Probably like that. Yeah. Here we go. 65. Just about. 65 degrees. Okay. And I actually went this way, if you guys remember, because this is a positive direction. Positive rotation there is. Uh, and that is the counterclockwise. So I stopped here. Now they're asking me to come up with two angles. One is positive and one is negative, who could end up living on this same ray here, on this same terminal side of my angle? Okay, let me think a little bit here, because I think, looking at the past examples, I could rotate, let's say, um, I could add, if I'm here, I could add myself another fold rotation. I mean, I could go like this, woo-hoo. And I would land on the same spot. This means I have 65 plus a full rotation, so 360. And how much would that be? Give me that in the chat, please. I'm going to say positive. Theta is going to give me uh, uh, 425. 425. If you agree, give me thumbs up with your chat, please. If you agree with this guy, give me a thumbs up with your chat. Okay, I see. Uh, I see that. I see that. All right. Now, what about? Uh, so, actually, right now, this angle here, which happens to be uh, four, two, five, also lives here. Now, what about the negative roommate? Negative roommate happens when you take whatever the number that you have started with, the angle, and then subtract three hundred and sixty from it. Basically, you're going the other direction. Uh, how much do you think is that? 65 minus 360. How much is that? Okay. I've got a negative 295. So how did I get there? Well, let me change the color here. Well, this time I decided to go the other direction. So I took... Uh, I took... Uh, uh, I started actually from from uh, from here, and then I went the other direction. I went like this. This is 90, 180. I'm sorry. 65, 90, 180, and then another 90, and then whatever the rest that I got here. And I got myself negative, negative. So this guy also is a partner of negative 2, roommate of negative 2, not 5. Uh, one positive, one negative. Okay. That's the terminal for this guy. Okay, try this one here. Try this one. Try, uh, find the positive and a negative, uh, negative co-terminal for uh for 88 uh, let's see if we could put some timer here I've got uh, 448, uh, so somebody, uh, uh, that's Ethan, I've got uh, eight, eight, 88 plus 360, and the answer for this one, I believe, uh, I've got 448, 
please confirm if that is true by yes or no in the chat. 2448 is a positive roommate. And uh, I've got 88 minus 360. I'm taking a full rotation in the opposite direction. And I see that uh, I've got 272. Negative, I should say. Ne let me choose the color for that. So negative 272. Somebody confirm, please. Okay, good. That's how you do the coterminals. All right. At uh, 448 and negative 272. Adding and subtracting. Um, I think, are you, are you good with this or do you want to linger a little bit here? If you're good with this, uh, give me yes so we can move on. Uh, if we're not good, we could just uh, take more examples. It's quite a few of us, so I need to see. Uh, I need to see you make a decision. Maybe I need. To, do I need to make a poll or something? Okay, a little bit more. I need to see more feedback. Okay, so in this case, in this case, uh, just a quick one here. Uh, I would have to take this if I want a positive coterminal, positive roommate, take the 410 plus 360. If you want the negative coterminal, you take the 410 and then subtract 360. And that should land you on the same spot with the 410. That's why we call them coterminal. They coexist, they co inhabit the same, uh, the same terminal side of the angle. Okay, good. Let's move on. 500 is for you to do on your own, but this is what you should end up with 500, 860, and negative 220. Negative 120 is also another one you could try, and this should uh, land you on uh, 240 and negative 480. All right, here we go. Another concept is reference angle. Reference angle is a positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. To say this in a different way, whatever gets you to your closest x-axis, that's the angle that we're talking about. Whatever takes me to the, my closest x-axis, that is the angle that we're talking about in this case. So let's say, for example, I am, I am, let's say I'm here. And I'm just going to pretend I am here and I am uh, 155. Let's say 150. So what is the reference angle for 150? If you want the reference angle for 150, it's whatever going to get you to the closest X axis. So in this case, how much do you think I need to add to 150 to get me to 180? That's my closest right now. I'm here. How much do you think? Yep, that's precisely. That's, as you're, that's why this guy here has a reference angle of 30. So this 150 has a reference angle because this is whatever it's going to take me to my closest x-axis. That's my reference angle. Let's take some examples on this. So uh, find the measure of the reference angle for each given angle here. So I've got myself, um, uh, I've got myself my rectangular coordinates here, Cartesian coordinates, and I am thinking to myself, okay, okay, okay. So I'm 135. 135 happens to be, Okay, let me label that for you. This is the first quadrant, second quadrant, and third quadrant. And uh, fourth quadrant would be here. Where do you think is 135? First, second, third, or fourth? Yep, I see that, Ivan. See that, Marco? I see that, Ethan. So it has to be second because if I started here, remember, you start from the initial. That's the initial. And then this is 190, and I did not even cross the 180. I didn't. I just added some 
angle to one to 90 and I just stopped here now the question is what is your reference angle what's my reference angle for 135 well I don't know but I could know if I took the 180 that's my closest see that this is where your closest here so whatever is going to take you here that's the amount 180 minus 135 and how much is that How much is I uh, see 45 here 45 45 is the reference angle for me that's the one this is my reference angle uh, for the first one that's my reference angle. okay now let's say that I'm actually down here and I'm thinking of one or I should say I uh, started at negative 105 negative 105 how do you do that? You go clockwise or counterclockwise here? How do you do that? How do you do that negative? Oh, clockwise, thank you. So I actually start here. And then I have to go like this. He's 90. And uh, 90 has, okay, 90 and then uh, 15, I believe, after 90. Yeah, I have a little bit of 15 here. So I'm going to be landing here, and this is going to be my oh, negative 105, negative 105. Okay, what's my reference angle? Whatever is going to get you to the closest x-axis, which happens to be this dude here. So whatever is going to take me all the way up here, that's going to be my reference angle from here to here. You can't see that color, so I'm change it. From here to here. How much is that? 75. That's it. 75 is your reference angle. Okay. As easy as that. 75 is your reference angle. Okay. Try this. Try this here. Find the measure of the reference angle for each of the given angles here. So find the reference of this guy here. Okay. I'm just going to set it up for you. You guys have to think. Uh, anybody finds it, just uh, put that in the chat so we can take a look at it and confirm, be happy with you. Hopefully we got the same one as you did. Okay. And two, five. <clears throat> How far, or whatever gets you to your closest x-axis, that's the reference angle. That's what we're after here. Thirty-five, thirty-five, interesting. Thirty-five is uh, three, two, five plus thirty-five gives me three sixty three three. Yep, that's right. So if you're here, if your angle is here, I'm probably here somewhere. So you rotate it all the way to three twenty-five. This is how much. You would have to travel more to get to the closest x-axis. So 35, in this case, is your reference angle. 35 is your reference angle in this case. All right. This is my reference angle for this dude here. Okay. Uh, just uh, This is when you watch the video. So this is for some pre-cuts. Uh, let's say you guys, we have. You, uh, by the way, math you could stay. Uh, I could stay uh, on a little bit here. But uh, let's say that I have a Cartesian coordinates here, uh, rectangle coordinates, and I have x and y point. How do I find out the trig functions from a point? Find trig functions from a point. Uh, this here, this case here, sine is y over r, um, cosine is x over r, and tangent is y over x. Okay, R being the radius, and uh, where is what I want to show you down here? 
So remember that radius is, is distance, so it's always positive. Regardless of the point on the Cartesian coordinates, the radius has to be positive all the time because it's the distance. Okay, so let's take a look on exactly what's going on here. Here's an example here. It says, find the values of the trig function. So I'm given one point. I'm given a point, negative 6, 9. And I'm asked to find the six trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and also the cotangent. So let's just take it one step at a time. This is my x. Uh, this is my x for the point. So this is my x. This is the y. And how do you find the r? Well, according to what we just discovered right now is x squared plus y squared. So r is going to be square root of uh, negative 6 squared plus 9 squared. And uh, how much is that? What is 6 squared? Somebody put, uh, put that, please. Uh, what is 6 squared? Because 6 squared is the same as... Um, what is 9 squared? I see 36 and I see 81. Okay, 81. What is 9? What is uh, 36 plus uh, 81? Uh, 117. I see that. Uh, so uh, how do I figure out 117? What would that be to me? I need to think about a um, perfect square, like the 25s, like the 16s, like the... Um, the nines. Okay, I see some writing here, not yet. So, this guy, 117, you could branch this out as uh, 9 times uh, 13. Somebody punch that in and see, double check. So, I do take the square root of them, which means I will land with uh, 3, square root of 13. Okay. So now I know r. I know x, which is negative 6. I know y, which is 9. And I know r, which is 3 squared of 13. Well, basically, you've got the key to get all six trig functions. Okay? So let's get uh, to them one at a time. Uh, first one is uh, uh, sine is uh, sine theta is y over uh, r which we did that just a minute ago, 9 over 3 over uh, square root of 13. You could uh, uh, rationalize here, obviously. Remember, you have to rationalize here, square root of 13, square root of 13. You also could simplify this before you rationalize. It's probably easier, 3 divided by square root of 13, which is going to make you go down to uh, this final answer for the sign. Okay, that's the sign. Sign uh, is going to be similar. You've got negative 6 divided by that. I'll probably also um, simplify first. The 6, that's going to give you a 1 at the bottom and negative 2 at the top. And that's why you got that. And then don't forget that you have to rationalize. Square root of 13, square root of 13. Okay? Which should lead you to that one down there. And finally, uh, the tangent y over x. Tangent is y over x, and it's negative 9 over t, uh, over negative, I'm sorry, 9 over negative 6, which is negative 3 over 2. And that should be the first three trig functions. Well, what about the uh, uh, cosecant and secant and cotangent? You just take the reciprocal of that. So the reciprocal of uh, sec cosecant is 1 over sine. Flip that, so that becomes square root of 13 over 3. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, uh, square root 13 over 2. And finally, the cotangent was the reciprocal of uh, tangent, which is negative 2 over 3 in this case. And, um, and uh, that should be all six uh, trig functions. Okay? Here's a little quiz if you guys want to do. This is how you draw, or they're, it's, it's, they're asking you to draw the angle in standard position. Uh, somebody give me, please, is it the 210 clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise, that's true. How about negative 116? In the chat, please, is negative 116 a clockwise? That is true. Okay. 
And uh, given a measure of reference angle, what's the reference angle for 290, 290? Reference angle for 290, whatever gets me close to the closest x-axis. Whatever gets me to the closest x-axis. 290, how much do you think we're talking about? 70? 290, 290, 70, that is true. Okay, and 195? Negative 195, I should say. Negative 195. So you have to rotate clockwise. Clockwise. You should have 15 for this dude. How do you get to this point here? And uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, don't forget, this is uh, X and this is Y. And uh, you get the R radius, as we've done. And then uh, you should end up with uh, sine and cosine uh, in this uh, as a result of this here. Sine, cosine, secant, secant of that. Okay. All right. Here we go. Last minute. A minute of hope with Armani. I was delighted to see uh, you again. And uh, I just encourage you to keep uh, pushing. I know we're going through rough times right now. It is really awesome to see all of you uh, engaged, and I wanted to see more. So please invite your friends to come. Instead of spending time, uh, hopefully they're not just wasting time. Uh, I understand there's some commitments, but if, there's, uh, if they could just spare the time to be with us, have fun, laugh, Google, learn, and share. Uh, but I, uh, my encouraging moment here would be for you. I, I know that some of you are going through some rough times, and I um, could speak from my heart. Uh, uh, I know it's challenging, but uh, we're going to trust in God and we're going to help each other. Uh, have you seen that sign, that uh, poster that uh, help your neighbor uh, get help and also uh, give help? Uh, so uh, let's do that, okay? Put a smile on somebody's face today. And uh, you guys are awesome. Mm -hmm.